Morning everybody, Rusty from the Rusty Razor got another shave of the day and today we're going to be doing, yes, Sterling Peach. Yes, it's one of their fall scents. This is from, what, 2019? This one here. I got this from Jimmy over at uh, NYC uh, Shaving. He gave this, sent this to me two years ago, I think it was, and I'm still going through it. And every time I use it, it's like, ah, uh, smells like peaches and I love peaches. It's one of my, it's like I have, it's like you walk past into my kitchen right now. And it's like you walk past a big bowl of them. And you're like, ah, peaches. Yes. Mm. All right. So we're going to be using the Nassets number two, second use with the crisp razor. Yes, you can. I looked it up. You can still get crisp razors. Not exactly this one, but they have uh, a different handle now. A different looking handle so it's the same head but with different handles it seems like they rotate through through stuff make it different and then we're gonna be following up with yes peach splash mm, more peaches and this lathers up pretty nice it's like a nice little bit of lather there soaked up some moisture there we go yeah looking good so how is your day going mine it's like a lazy day today it's like you ever have one of those days it's like i did my workout this morning it's like did and then it's like yeah i suppose i should do something else now yeah, oh yeah i gotta make a video <laughs> i gotta do a shave video yeah it's like just kicking back and relaxing it's like no worries no place to go even though i should be working on my bike my motorcycle, my current one. It's like, wasn't planning on talking about the motorcycle, but it just what popped in my head just now. I got a, I'm doing kind of a restoration work on it right now. I pulled the tank off and resealed the tank inside. Because eventually, you know, they're made of steel. People think that those tanks have a sealant in the middle, you know, inside it. It's just bare metal. And if you don't keep the tank full all the time, they start to rust. So what I do, this last time I took uh, some tank sealant, uh, POR15 tank sealant stuff. Went through and cleaned it all out, filled it up full of vinegar to make sure I got, because vinegar is an acid. You know, it's like 5% it's like acid. A low grade acid, but it's still acid. And let that soak for a few days and drained it out and washed it out and and so it sit in the sun and so it would dry out really quickly and then I took this POR fifteen. It's like a little uh eight ounce container, not much. Not even a pint, which is six pints or 16, I think. The little jars, like thing, pulled the top off, poured it in, and worked it around, like taking a tank, rotating it, and everything. Well, that was all sealed up because I sealed it off with some uh, duct tape. So nothing would come out and Rotate it around, let it, you know, get everything coated all throughout the interior of the tank. And, and oh, the razor's working good. It's sliding right over. And once I got that, up, I think it took me about half an hour. I just kept rotating around, make sure I got every crack and crevice. Then I drained it out, Oops, turned it upside down and drained it out of the fill spout and let it sit there for, I suppose it's like, I think they said 36 hours. So I just sat upside down to dry, seal, get it proper. And then it's like now, it's like you look inside, it's nice and shiny. <laughs> it's like, yeah, works good. And now I'm going to sand my tanks down 
reprimer them. Oh, I got some thousand grit wet sanding paper. I've done this with the cars before, so sand uh, the uh, clear coat off. Get down to the uh, base coat. Take care of it, and then uh, reapply the base coat, and then an upper coat, and then re put clear coat back over top of it. Spray it on. Like just same as doing a car. It's like my my uncle taught me how to uh, do body work when I was five, and before we moved to the farm, we had a. It's like my grandparents owned a bunch of plots of land on the lake. So my uncle bought one of them. We bought well, my parents bought one, and so we were all sitting there living right next to each other. And my uncle had a auto body shop. And this is after he got out of the army. And he uh, was a mechanic in the army. My grandfather was a mechanic. And so he taught us how to do body work and everything. It's just like when I was five, six, seven years old doing the, these kind of things, doing the sanding. And he was like, you know, you got to go this direction, this direction. Make sure you get lots of water and nice and smooth. And then it's like you want a nice smooth surface. And then you put other stuff. And it's like it was pretty good. So that's what I plan on doing is... Go see that. Get everything done. And the biggest reason I'm doing this was that after the derecho hit, if you haven't heard, you know, if you're new to the channel, we got hit with a derecho in Iowa. Uh, like 110 mile an hour winds. Basically, it was the equivalent of a category one, two hurricane went across the state into Illinois, tore things to pieces. And the, the neighbor's trees fell on my shed and just crushed them like a bug. And after I dug everything out, my motorcycle spent almost a year sitting outside because I didn't have a shed. And geez, you have this massive derecho event during COVID, so nothing's being produced. I could it was over a year before I could get a shed to even put up. So it was sitting underneath a I had a, a bike cover on it for a while and that ended up degrading after time. And it, it flapped in the wind. No matter how much I tied it down, it flapped in the wind. Basically it rubbed the top clear coat off. Then it started working on the base coat. And I got a heavier tarp put over top of it, and that just made it worse. It was just like. So, top clear coat in some places got rubbed off. The base coat got rubbed off. So, it's right down to the primer in some places. And it's like, just like just acting like low grade sandpaper over time. And it started bleaching after that. It started bleach after you lost the, the upper coat, clear coat. It just started bleaching everything. You're like, ah, this sucks. So now I'm doing a restoration. New paint. And there's a company that has match sells the matching uh, the paint and everything. So I got the matching paint. So I'm gonna re redo everything. Wow. Ooh, a little tame of stain right there. Hmm. I feel like there's a little bump or something. But this crisp razor with the assets is working good. This is really smooth through here. And I feel a little bit of hair in those locations. And then after I'm going to get the... Um, i got to contact the place. It's like my uh, chiropractor, the guy that I did a trip with and took the chiropractic uh, benches over to Chicago for I think I talked about that and he had a couple of his um, 
tables reupholstered and he gave me the information of the person contact and I said yeah yeah just bring them over and we can reupholster your uh, seats because seats look good but after a year of sitting constantly outside in the elements no matter how much you get them covered ah uh, they look like crap so I'm gonna get them reupholstered too so that's gonna be a little feed and I got I'm gonna put new tires on it it's been few years put on new tires, so it's time for new treads. So after I'm all said and done, the bike will look good. And debating to after I did all that work and uh, drive it for a few more years and or sell it and put the money towards another bike, which I want to get. But when I get an adventure, like I think it talked about it a while back was getting an adventure bike more upright for long distance cruising because <laughs> my Suzuki is a after riding it for two hours it becomes starts to become a torture device it's on the tail the uh, ergonomic is great for running around town but and my brothers all want to go start doing long range tours and stuff out west and out east. You know, take a week or two. And just ride. And that means I want a different bike. Yeah, it is smooth. Blades work good. There's one right there. You hear it. All moisture. Nice and smooth. All right. Say this crisp razor and these assets like each other. I mean, even on the second use. Nice and smooth. Now, if you're looking for a halfway decent, uh, it, to me, it reminds me of kind of in between the uh, Seems a little bit better than the uh, um, King C. Gillette for efficiency. And not as good as, uh, say, a Mercure 34C or an Edwin Jagger. But if you're looking for a $15, $16 razor that's metal, stainless steel with a wood handle. I gave one to Sig. He liked it. It looks really good. So once I'm all done with the restoration on the bike I will post some pictures of it hopefully it'll look a lot better I don't know if you can hear that but that swing swing it's knocking the hair off break into a sweat. I think my blood sugar is starting to go down. Usually happens after I have a do a workout. Not drastically low. I don't know about you, but if you're diabetic, usually you can tell when your blood sugar starts to drop. Or goes up. And uh, 
having it drop is more dangerous than having it go up. Because if it goes up, you have plenty of time to do stuff to bring it down. But if it drops like a rock, you've got a short period of time before you pass out. And could be bad. But it's not that bad right now. I just feel it going down. Right there. Why did I miss that? There we go. Ah, oh, man, it's nice scent. If you like peaches, and it's been a while since uh, Sterling had peach, I think, on their website. So. You can find it. There's all. There's a really good alternate too. Is uh, Crown and Crane. If you like peaches, Crown and Crane has a really good one too. So, and I think they have it on their website now. All right, nice and smooth. Time for some splash. Hmm. I'm going to start competing with my uh, peaches in the kitchen. I'm going to have to have one for lunch. Mm. Ooh. Yeah, right here. It's like a little bit of tingling right through here and in that spot. I don't know. Hmm. Smells good. So, that was Sterling's Peach Splash. All right. Okay, well, this shave was brought to you by Sterling's Peach, your tallow based scent. It smells like peaches, but I did notice that over the last couple of years it is slowly fading. The peach scent is slowly fading on it. Not it's like this is doing good, but well, it doesn't take much. You just put a splash of the splash in with it and it makes up the difference. So, there we go. All right, second use of the Nasset Blades with the Crisp Razor. Man, did a heck of a job. Nice, nice smooth shave. I have to say, I uh, do like this uh, Crisp Razor. I think I only paid like $14 for it. So for a stainless steel razor with a uh, three-piece with a wood handle, I think it's beach. Man, it is a nice little razor. Well worth the money. Okay, so that is the shave of the day. Hope you guys like it. Like and subscribe. Share with your friends. And we'll see you in the next one. Rusty out.